Jen, and I taught uh, intermediate long string flow want. Uh, we started out the class with a quick review of grips. If you want more on those, you can go to the intro flow str uh, long string class video. Um, the first grip, it's open. The second grip is a wrap grip, and that's coming up across your palm and down and back until you've got it to the length that you want, and then you drop it between your two fingers, just like this. And what you got here is a short string flow wand. You can do anything with it. You can do with a regular short string flow wand. Um, the third type of grip is this V grip here. It's a V grip because you're making a V. Um, <laughs> and that's a nice loose grip. You can slide, get different lengths of wand very easily. And the last grip is a double V. You just grab that string uh, with your other hand and now you've got this two V grip going on here. Um, after that, we talked about fan isolations. They're fan isolations because I stole them from fans. Um, so what you do for that is your hands are the fans, you're rolling them off against each other like this. Um, and when you do this, it ends up looking like this. A presentation tip on this, it looks a lot better if you don't look at your hands, if you look ahead at um, From there, what do you do? Ah, yes, we did palm spins. Palm spin is this guy. It is an awesome recovery move. If you just dropped your wand or if it's going all over, just slide your finger out along that string till you get to the middle. Then do a palm spin. I totally meant to do that just now, right? Um, palm spins you can also turn into flowers. So you've got your one circle going on, you can do another circle. This is an in-spin one. This is an anti-spin one. You can do them in all directions. There's a couple of directions I'm not very good at, so I'm not going to show you. Um, where'd we go from there? Crossing. Sorry? Crossing. Cross hand work. So anything I just did with this hand, I can also do with that hand. So I've got, you can either do this with a thumb, I find it can be a little easier to do it with your wrist. Your strings are less likely to get tangled on each other. And then you can do all the same things we just did on that other side. Um, so that can be a nice symmetry thing going on there. And then to let that out, you just let go of it, it swings right back out. Um, did we do long string flowers after that? Neck wraps and variants. Oh yeah, neck wraps and variants. So, Neck wrap. This is the basic neck wrap. It is the foundation of a lot of other moves that I do. Um, so you start by throwing your wand over your shoulder. If you spin with it, you've got this very nice behind your back thing that you can come out of just by lifting. Um, if you let it keep going, same move, it comes back out over your shoulder. Easiest thing to do with it, just catch it with your other hand and tap it back. Um, and you need to stall it to do this. If you just put your hand out there and tap it, it's going to wrap out and hit you like that. So to stall it, you're going to start out when you catch it by moving very slowly backwards and slowing down. So that's an exaggerated emotion, but you can see what's going on. So it's hitting my hand, I'm moving back with it, gradually slowing it down. Um, and then the next thing you can do from there, so that's stalling it with your off hand. You can also stall it with your same hand. You can also not stall it with your off hand, you can catch it. So I'm going to catch it now. I got this wand over here. I can do other things with it. Take um, almost any move. You can take a break in the middle of it and fill it in with other things. So that's not catching it with your off hand. You can also do that with your same hand and that's a really nice roll type of motion in here. And then I can have my wand get away from me. Um, what do we do after that? Um, no hands? And empty hands? Oh yeah. Um, so the other thing you can do is you can send it around, catch it however you want, take this thumb, loop it right here, give it a nice grab, hold it against your chest, and send it back. So now, it looks like I've got it around my neck. I do not, in fact, have it around my neck. I have it around the back of my neck twice. This is a concept from Rope Dart. It's called an empty knot. The reason it's an empty knot is I can just let it go, and it falls. So what that looks like all together is I'm going to send it around, catch it, hook my thumb on it, send it back, and when I get bored of it, bonk. And that gives a nice punctuated look to the end of your move. Um, where'd we go from there? Uh, long string flowers. Long string flowers. These are some of my favorites. Um, so the first long string flower is really kind of a medium string flower. So before we did flowers on your palm. Now we're going to do flowers in the air. Um, in some ways these are actually easier than the palm flowers because it's kind of hard to keep your fingers out of the way. Um, so the first one, the arm flower, you're going to send it up, reach under the string. So I'm reaching under the string pendulum and it comes back down, I'm just going to hit it. I like to do nice symmetrical arms. If it's going too fast for you to catch it, spin it back the other way, it'll slow down. Then do that same sliding out along the string to catch it. This sliding along the string 
especially for this move, is very important if you do a fire wand. Grabbing your fire wand here hurts. Don't do it. Follow your string. Um, so that's the arm one. Again, that's up, then down and around. Um, the next one is your leg. This takes a bit more string, so you're going to let the string out there. Um, you're just going to send it across. You go over the one, then down and around. So what's happening there, I'm going to break that up, um, is you're passing it under your leg. Passing it under my leg. Let's do that again. Um, so on. This is the problem with demonstrating moves. They never work. Um, under your leg. So this is the first step here, right? Under the leg. Then you're going to bring it down and keep spinning it. And that's where that nice big arc comes from. So those are long string flowers. And especially with that under the leg one, since it's going really fast, I like to take it in a V grip, then send it back the other direction to slow it down a bit before I grab it. Pirouettes. Pirouettes. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about in-spin and anti-spin. The easiest way to figure out what's going on with this here is just do a nice big circle over your head. So if I'm going the same direction as it when I'm spinning, this is an in-spin pirouette. It seems to be a slower and kind of more I guess, graceful thing. Anti-spin, going the opposite direction to the one. Um, and you can do whatever style turn you like doing. Clearly I like kicking while I turn. That's not a mandatory part of the move. Um, and you can do it, so I was doing it with this direction wand. You can do it with the other direction wand. This would be in-spin this way, anti-spin this way. Um, and those are good moves on their own. They're also a good building block for floor plane flowers. So now what I've got going on is just hand on the chest, V-grip in my off hand. Uh, arm very straight. You don't actually need to do much work. I'm just standing here doing nothing and this wand is still totally going in circles. Um, you can power it though. Um, and if you have it going in the anti-spin direction, if you just walk forward, you get these very nice pedals. You can walk backward with it spinning the same direction and you'll get, again, in-spin pedals. Um, you can do this on, you can spin the wand in the other direction. I was going this way. If I go this way, I'm spinning it with me. Generally, you can tell if it's in, if it's in spin if it's going with you on the outside of the swing. If it's going against you on the outside of the string, swing, that's anti-spin. Um, you can also, again, do these with your same hand, though you need kind of a wrap grip to shorten that string out. Um, so then that would be in spin, anti spin, well, that's in spin backwards, that's anti spin forwards. Again, all of these figures you can do in all of the directions. Um, and as you start getting better at these, uh, this drill I totally stole from Drex, from Poi, because it's an awesome drill. Um, you can start doing one, two, three, stall, back, two, three, stall, and to get more some control with your pedals. Um, where'd we go from there? Down stalls. Down stalls. Down stalls are a very nice dramatic move to incorporate into your routine. They're very hard with the long string. Shorten your string for these. Um, they're a similar principle to the stalls we were doing earlier, catching it with our hands, except you're relying on gravity. You do a lot of these with TikToks. These are stalls. Um, you go up, down and catch it. Up, down and catch it. There's no necessarily secret to these. You do have to kind of start feeling it and it's again, I'm slowing down gradually and stopping it. There's a little bit of punch. Mostly what these are is a lot of practice. Then it's a very nice touch to throw in in the middle of your routine or anywhere because a lot of flow wand is very, well, flowy. So it's nice to break it up with something that's a little more punctuated. Um, Where do we go from there? Under the leg. Under the leg work. All right, so we're gonna build on what we did earlier with this stuff, only this time we're gonna come in from behind our legs. So what I'm doing here, I'm lengthening it to a mid-length straight, um, and then I'm going back behind my leg, coming forward like that, right? So this is the first step. The hardest part of this, I think, is kicking out. Something that I found helps and looks kind of cool is if you're doing that same spin under the leg, then turn to give yourself more time to kick out. So again, that is coming under the leg from behind, turning and whoops, stepping on your wand. Mm -hmm. That is not a recommended part of that move, however. <laughs> Um, where'd we go from there? Waist and shoulder wraps. Waist and shoulder wraps. So, one of the nice things about long string is you can totally control it with body parts other than your hand. So what I'm doing there is I'm wrapping it a little lower than usual, stalling it on my lower arm. You, ideally, you want to not hit yourself with this. This takes some practice. I've got my arm up here so it's going low, slow, and stop. You can also do that with your waist. Um, I like to have it a little bit shorter for that. Um, you can do a wrap like this. This one's a little harder because you have to not cheat it. If you want to cheat it, which I totally usually want to do, um, 
you can do a sort of like, uh, look at me, I'm wrapping up, so now I have a reason for this hand to be behind my back. Um, and now I'm going to wrap the other way. And then if it's not working, you can just cheese it a little bit. Um, key thing for this, start out looking quarter to a half turn away from where you want to finish up. So if I want to finish looking at y'all, I'm going to start this move over here so that I can slow it down and stop it. Nice and dramatic, and it means you're less likely to hit yourself with the wand, which is ideal here. Um, groundwork? Groundwork. Performance thing. Use your levels. You can be up high. You can be in the middle. You can move your body up and down. You can also go down on the ground, which is an oft-neglected space. Um, and this goes into just using your whole body. So people are watching the wand, sort of, but they're actually mostly watching you. So legs, totally unnecessary for anything I'm doing here, right? But adding a leg in makes the move look very different. So leg work, ground work, these are all important things. That was totally awkward. Y'all mm -hmm. forgive me for that, I hope. Um, and these are things you can learn from pretty much any of the arts we teach here. So things have a lot of cross applicability. Um, do we cover anything else or we're good? All right, y'all, have a good, winter and then we'll hopefully see you in the spring.